This is a story of transformation between youth and manhood. A time when a young man must set sail on a voyage into the world. To gain his feathers, become a brave. To adorn arrows in his quest for knowledge and respect. This is a story of us, council estate kids. The name is thousands without a voice. Where there are no rules, only experience to gain. Scorned by many, understood by few. But as time goes by, we will always be there. Only the faces will change. no movement that's the last thing it is to me it's a way of life man it's a culture that I live by it's about having pride in the way I look it's about working for my living earning everything I get it's about going to reggae dances and having a good time about enjoying the most multicultural culture in the world and hey, watch out there's some skinheads running around here about skinheads, I just think that you haven't got a clue, mate. Do you know what I mean? You just haven't got a clue, really. You haven't looked in at all. Do you know what I mean? It's as simple as that. There's a lot of different things. It's all right to dance, skinhead, sort of thing, but it's not right to be a skinhead. When people ask me what a skinhead is, I tell them, you know, a skinhead is a working class guy or a girl, you know. A skinhead is someone who stands up for what he believes in and what she believes in. The first thing to say, like, unfortunately, is, but I'm not what you think a skinhead is, um, which is, like, a Nazi or, you know, someone with shaved hair. And people quite often are like, you know, how can you be a skinhead? You know, you don't, you don't have short hair. And I was like, well, that's not really what it was about. Ask yes, two skinheads what skinhead is about. You'll probably get three different answers, you know. Skinhead is about, like, brotherhood. It's about, like, uh, it's just, like, a way of life and everything. And it's, like... You, like, stand for yourself and, like, your friends, and, like, you don't take any, like, slack from people or anything. Well, a skinhead, to me, is somebody who's got a lot of pride, um, is very strong, but also very lost. You know, when I look at them now, um, I mean, we were all lost, we were all lost kids, you know, and um, a skinhead is in the heart. A lot of people don't understand anyways. They think, oh, no, no, you got short hair, that's it, you know, you're, you're white. You're, you're a Nazi, you know, you're racist, you know, you don't like me because of my color. And then you try to explain and they're like, they still don't understand. proud of what we could be proud of, really. Because at that age, you need something to latch onto. It's a feeling, more than anything else. Because it's hard to actually walk about like this knowing people hate you, but still feeling pride in where you are. Well, I'd probably say it's like, just believe in what you want to believe. Don't, like, take notice of everyone else. Don't go with the crowd. Don't be a sheep. Just, like, listen to what you want to do. If, it's, like, you want to say something, say it loud. Just hang around with your mates and that. I'd say a decent skinhead is someone that believes in himself, knows what he's looking for, knows what he wants, knows how to dress, just someone that's well sussed, well clued up, knows what they're talking about. No mugs. An event seen from one point of view gives one impression. I find the media absolutely incredible because it is totally and utterly based on misinformation 
and lack of facts by people who have no understanding of the subject they're writing about. It's an e white working class males are an easy target. Seen from another point of view, it gives quite a different impression. It's that typical stereotype image of, of the muggy, bonehead, glue-sniffing, granny-mugging thug, you know what I mean? And he's just not like that. It's just complete myth. But it's only when you get the whole picture you can fully understand what's going on. If there are skinheads out there, which they obviously are, who um, have taken heed from what they've read in the newspapers to become skinheads, and become skinheads for the wrong reasons, and maybe gone around causing trouble for no reason, then the, the blame of that lies at the door of the media, because it's a monster they've created. I think really the media is probably the biggest enemy that the skinhead cult has ever seen. Every racist attack, every time the word skinhead comes up, and skinhead is used as a synonym for Nazi, whether it is a skinhead or not, whether it is a hooligan or whatever, even hippie, no matter what he looks like, Skinhead is the word for it. Everybody thinks we're we are bad and we're, well, whatever. We're evil and we're the <laughs> last scum of all. Aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> There's never going to be a bunch of football teams get together and take it to court. There's never going to be, you know, we're, we're lower than Bengalis, really. Oh, wait, I know what you're talking about. Skinhead girls and skinhead guys, they have those bald heads and they wear the big boots, right? Right? And the way that you can recognize them out of a crowd is that they're burning a cross on your front lawn. They can think I'm a hooligan, they can think I'm a thug. I don't care, they can think what they like, it don't affect me, do you know what I mean? But the thought of somebody thinking that I'm a racist, that upsets me. I'm a skinhead. I ain't no Nazi. Y'all explain it to me now. I didn't know. I didn't know. You're just living an easy life by scapegoating all the skinheads, and then you can say, while well, looking into the mirror, well, I am not a racist because I don't have cropped hair. Skinhead, being crucified for the sins of others, it's sort of like a misinterpretation, you know? Breaking the stereotype, you know, being, being crucified because people think of you as a certain way. Breaking that stereotype and proudly holding the banner skins. I've read the articles on skinheads in magazines and things like that, and they always say even the ones that aren't racist are, you know, like hoodlums that will rob you, you know, eat your babies, shit like that. One law for them, another one for us, which I think is like the skinhead logo. Everybody knows the media is controlled and run by middle class people who've never lived in the environment that I grew up in and, 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 and how skinheads grew up. They've got no um, perception at all of how we are because they don't know us. How can you go to a public school and then go to a university and live in middle class um, green belt land around London and, um, and work for the BBC and then tell us how we're meant to live. They get their hair cropped by the uniform and they're in. Narrow clip-on braces worn to be seen, but perhaps they're best known for their big boots, sometimes fitted with steel toe caps, which are not just for protection. People say, oh, I can't, I can't understand it. You know, why they do all this. Well, people saying that, and these are top people, politicians or whatever, saying, oh, I can't understand it. Well, that's just ignorance, you know. If you don't understand something, then you're ignorant of it. You're uneducated on it. There's a lot of hippies lost in the media at the moment who still carry a sore point for skinheads, and that's why it reflects in the way it does in the media. Bollocks to the media, really. Get up in the morning, stay paid for bread, sir, so that every mouth can be paid. I can basically remember it was mid-60s I started to see them, probably about 66 time they started to sort of evolve, but by, by sort of 68, 69, it was, it, it was rampant. Shut them a 
tear up choses ago. I don't want to end up like Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, Israelite. After a storm, there must be a calm. If you catch me in a farm, you sound your alarm. You can't really explain it unless you've done it. It was just a, one of those magic feelings. <laughs> well, the first time I got the haircut, I had a hat on, I took it off, and they just, just fell on the floor laughing. So I was a bit gutted. Because <laughs> they used to call me Gonzo, and they big nose, it just made me look even bigger. I used to have long hair and that, and then I wasn't allowed to have my hair the way I wanted it and that. So I shaved all off, and I got hassled even more. My dad punched me in the face. Um, and my mum quite liked it. You felt confident with yourself, but, I mean, there's a lot of piss takers about it at the time. We saw all, I mean, that playground chance, skinhead, skinhead over there, what's it like to have nowhere? It just felt good, you know, it still feels good, you know, to, like, crap my hair and lace up a pair of ducks, I love it, you know. When I first shaved my head, it was like, I bicked it, you know, I, like, shaved it completely bald. So it was, it was really good. We're having a party. I hope you are hearty. Yeah. We're having a party. I hope you are hearty. Sing it to me, children. Rum, ba, ba, do, ba, 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 do. Rum, ba, ba, do, ba, ba, Intensify. Rum, ba, ba, do, ba, 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 do. Rum, ba, ba, The original skinheads evolved out of the mods. The clothes, you know, with the stay press, the brogues, the suits, um, were always, you know, in the evening smartly dressed. I mean, in the daytime it was jeans, uh, braces, boots. It goes from the sublime to the ridiculous, basically the style. I feel like ten buttons on your, your suit is, is like very smart to the extremes of being snobbish. The style was important enough for me to look like a skinhead. You could tell I was a skinhead, but I wasn't it. My brother and his friend were like um, prima donnas. Mm. And they were like immaculately dressed and very elitist, very, very snobbish. A lot of snobbery in the skinhead cult, a lot of snobbery. The only thing really that had distinguished in the old days the look of a skinhead to the look of any smart bloke was the length of his trousers. Skinheads always wore them about three or four inches shorter than everyone else to show off their white socks. There's a pair of flares laid, laid out in front of me and a pair of Dr. Martins. And uh, for some reason, the Dr. Martins appealed to me more than a pair of flares. When I got to my mum with my Dr. Martins on the first time, she freaked out a bit. She thought, what the hell have you got on your feet? Our uh, parents actually don't like it so very much because they think, well, well, our religion is we are Jewish, and they think that that don't fit together, doesn't fit together. And seeing walk, seeing us walking around with our boots and whatever, and our mother gets eyes like that. And it's like gay people wear skinhead clothing, all right. And I've got nothing against gay people, but they're not skinheads, and they never will be skinheads because it's not about wearing big boots and shaving your hair. Skinhead. All the old skinheads were giving me their stuff and I was a real class gear at that time. When you was going through 77 you couldn't get sod all. You know, be army lightweights, out and jacket, Fred Perry t-shirts. I mean those were the things that you could pick up in the shop. Didn't like a light when it kicked off with two-tone and what have you. You had a lot of gear that come out, but it came out labelled as mod wear. It's like you've got this big thing nowadays about skinheads only wear Levi 501s. But originally, any pair of jeans would do, like you'd wear Levi's, Wranglers, Lee's, anything at all. Like, same with the shirts, people know they say, oh, skinheads only wear Ben Sherman's. Well, it's a load of rubbish, really. Like, originally, you wore, originally, it wasn't even button down shirts. It was just ordinary, plain white work shirts. When I went to school, you know, you had to wear a white shirt. So, you know, Ben Sherman, a white Ben Sherman looked much better than those sort of white nylon ones. 
as as the eighties went on, going on, you know, going to scooter rallies and that, and you get lots more skinheads there. A lot more of them seem to be, um, you know, dressed into the original style, which which was really good. It, it seemed to come back in quite a big way. Even the even the punk skins, you know, the, you know, your national front lot, they even they seem to be sort of dressing, trying to dress the original style. It looks an extreme look when you see somebody with their boots. Shaved head, and I mean, they look, I mean it's kind of hard to look nice and quiet. I mean, you look nasty, whether you are or not. The cosh felt comfortable against his flesh, his boots felt solid, secure on his feet. In a few minutes he would meet his mates and soon they would be ready for an aggro. I mean really in my view, being a skinhead was all about violence. And that's it. Whether it was baggies, blacks, football supporters, whatever, violence. The way of being a skinhead is that if I have a problem with you, I would do it in a way that I feel necessary for me to do, which is normally violence. If I don't like you and you say something to me that offends me, I'll kick your head in. Hammers over my head, iron bars over my head, I've been stamped up, nose busted, still pins in my hand. Get shot at twice. I've been shot. I got shot in like Seattle over a skinhead fight, you know. I've been stabbed. I got stabbed in LA in my face by another skinhead from a gang called Lemonheads, who are now urban boot boys. You know, whatever, right? And sort of I've been in jail for like skinhead related shit. I've devoted my life to skinhead. I am not gonna leave it. Like one time I went to jail and like it was all over the news, like the media like made a big thing there, like three Nazi skins arrested and guns are found and all that and then um like I got beaten by the whole unit and like I had stitches all over my face and stuff. So it's like, you know, they obviously wanted me to get attacked, like they put me in a in a unit with fifteen blacks, you know, and like left my cell door unlocked, so I'm a little bit extreme though, I think violence is quite fun sometimes. It uh, give, gives you adrenaline and uh, stuff. But people don't like getting hurt, skinheads, blacks, Asians, people don't like getting hurt or getting grieved. So we had a good rapport between all the different sections of town. But when it did go off, it went off in a big way. We're usually wankers in pubs, pissed geezers, you know. And that's what it was, pissed white men. You know, the blacks had a lot of respect. We had a lot of respect for the seven because we were exactly the same. People, exactly the same. You know, young lions. So if someone's front and you face to face and taking a piss, do you know what I mean? You gotta deal with it like. But like if someone's having a little you can walk away from it. A big man will walk away from a fight if he can. You got a motherfucking problem? Eh? You wanna fucking you want some fucking knots on your fucking head? Just film, motherfuckers, cause you don't know what the fuck you're dealing with over here, boy. It's part of any teenager growing up. Part of anyone growing up. It happens everywhere. You can't escape it. It's part of life, isn't it? Whatever. Huh? You always get hassle though, it just it just comes to us really. Oh, every weekend there's always a bit of trouble. Good you Friday, know. battles down the fair. Every good Friday when the fair opens again. A bit of violence now and again. It's not just skinheads. It's a metalheads fight, hippies fight, over pot, you know, whatever. <laughs>
everyone fights and stuff. Just skinheads always tagged for it. Yeah. I wouldn't doubt that, there's, that violence is associated to skinheads, but, but sometimes it's either justified or there is a reason for it. And I think there's a very difference, great difference between violence for a reason, the minor's violence. <laughs> the right wing or even the left wing to decide that you know that there's they're, they're creating violence for a target and for a reason then that's got to be a lot better than just hitting out anybody for no reason at all exactly know what happened. All I know is that these people get beat up. It's fucking bullshit. If you're fighting for a reason, that's cool. But obviously this isn't a reason. Obviously not. When you got 20 on one, that's not a fucking reason. I'm from Milwaukee. The Brew City, BCS, in our town, it doesn't happen like this. For real. Trust me, if you want to have a fun time, skinheads together, Milwaukee. Milwaukee, fucking Wisconsin. I can't believe this shit. The whole fucking night. Why well, I didn't become a teddy boy is because, you know, I just didn't like packets. Skinheads was all about, you know, everyone knew skinheads didn't like packets, and so I thought that's the one for me, you know? I'm a Jackson Ice thug. I look for people to beat up for no reason after a while. <laughs> Brooklyn, New York skinheads. And Hawaii. Uh, hula hula. Harbor skinheads, Wilmington, Carson, Long Beach. Uptown Boot Boys? Yeah. Well, it started in the dark days of 88. There was the hip hop music. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a bunch of hoodlums. Well, the Brooklyn Hoy Boys were stronger than ever. And we're, most of us are better in jail. It's only if you buy yourself or somebody they'll probably start on you. Like a couple of times we've had guys calling his name and says, right, come on, then me and you square go. And once you say that, they just can't believe it. Think, you know, what's this Asian guy doing turning around and want to fight me, you know? So so a fight starts off, yeah, and we all got thrown outside. And this one in particular, I seen him and I just went up to him, yeah. And inside he was really giving this aggressive look like this and went up to him and said, yeah. And all of a sudden his face just changed. He had all these tattoos on his head and everything made in brain made in Scotland and all that, he had all these tattoos everywhere and as soon as I went up to him his face changed and he, he, nearly, he was nearly crying before I even hit him he was like crying the guy did, he was on his knees but well just beat him up and that was it really. Yeah. I wouldn't say it is a particular violent cult but people have portrayed it that way yes um, and sort of the male going to the football having a fight type thing but for me personally no. You have as I said such a lot of different kinds of skinheads who often don't like each other. And you have the Turks who don't like us at all. And you know, there's a lot of violence. Yeah. Hooligans. Sometimes you're just in the mood to beat, some, to beat someone or whatever. Yeah. All this greasy, you know, hippie hip stuff. If they, if you go to a ska concert and it's hundreds of hippies and only five skins or what, you get angry. <laughs> Hast du mitgekriegt? Die Arsche haben zuerst Gas aus der Wanne raus. Echt? Ja. Na hier, willst du was abhaben? Brauchst du noch Wasser? Ja, das ist der zweite. Wer hat noch was abgegeben? Ich mach nicht. Wasser schadet doch. Ich hab das oft hier noch mitgekriegt. Jetzt sag mal eins. What we have is unified power all over. If one of our friends got hit, if anybody, even I, if I knew a person, just one person, and that person got hit, all the skins are going to have to fight out. At first it was just a mob. We went to school together and hung out and sniffed glue and drunk beer and that sort of stuff. But as we grew older, 
that gang became a lot more violent and a lot more aggressive. So we like to be remembered as the most violent firm of skinheads. <laughs> That's how we like to be remembered, guys. Like, no one else could be as violent as what we were. Lots of people, the only language they understand is like uh, violence. When it comes to a big guy who wants to fuck you up, you can't uh, sit there and talk to him. He'll just laugh at you and you lose respect. Yeah? Violence is a way to get respect. I think violence is fucking stupid because one day maybe you get killed or maybe you kill someone and it's, it's not good. And it's okay, it's okay to fight when you win, but one day you can't win, you know, and then you get fucking beaten up really bad. And I think that's the day people realize why this is not fun. Stop your running about. It's time you straighten right out. Stop your running around. Making trouble in the town. Ah, Rudy. A message. To you. This is like the same as any any group. Do you know what I mean? You go and block people. You got a fat one. You got a, you got a nutter. You got a pisshead. You, you could just you've got everybody. It's just it's exactly the same. Do you know what I mean? And if violence comes up, it's dealt with. Not by me. Do you know what I mean? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let them do the fighting. I have to do my other type of fighting with all the other fucking people giving me abuse. Do you know what I mean? There are instances, yeah, where you know. You might have to defend yourself and stick up with for your mates and you know do what you have to do, but um, I you know think the movement generally be better off if more people thought you know more with their brains and less with their boots. There's always going to be morons no matter what you're involved in. So some skinheads are going to be violent, but it's not part of the criteria for being a skinhead. I want all you skinheads to get up on your feet, put your braces together and your boots on your feet. And give me some of that old moon stamping. Get ready. We got three million miles to reach on the moon. So let's start getting happy now. Ready? Yeah, 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 yeah. was born out of a, a mixture of working class cultures, basically being the British working class culture, which was like um, your working class mods, sort of evolved into skinheads around 68, 69. And they picked up on the Jamaican music they'd been listening to in blues parties and things, and took it on as their own. And like as a mark of respect, reggae musicians started saying thank you by recording skinhead moonstomp, skinhead girl records like that. So reggae music and skinhead grew together. And with regards to like sort of skinhead reggae and the rock steady, it, it's a really it's hard to describe, but it's a really good feeling, you know, if you hear a good song you're like, oh, you know, that's brilliant. And you really sort of get into the rhythm and you want to get up and dance or do whatever. But it's something that really like affects you. That's the sort of music I like and that that's why I like it. Cause it really sort of touches your soul. It's always been that music for me. You know, I've just, uh, I suppose I've just grown up as a white West Indian. I think the song that really typifies being a skinhead has got to be Simmerip's Skinhead Moonstomp. I think it came out 1969, 1970. On that there was Skinhead Moonstomp, there was Skinhead Girl, there was Skinhead Jamboree. The whole album was dedicated to skinheads. The front cover was for skinheads. And for a group of Jamaican musicians, to actively court the skinhead cult really emphasised the mixture of British and Jamaican cultures that had come together to make skinhead what it was. You know, like every skinhead firm had a few Caribs in, you know, a few sort of Jamaican guys. All used to go to the same club, there was no, never any problem. When the skinhead walks down the street, every chick heart skips the beat. I would ask them, is there any skinheads in, in the audience? And they would say, yeah, quite a lot, and it makes me happy. Because when I see them, I know what I'm going to expect. I know. You get what I mean? 
So I do like skinheads coming to 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 my shows. Skinheads, you know, they're into reggae music, they like oi and stuff like that as well, you know, that's like homegrown music for skinheads, which we didn't have the first time round. No doubt, if there would have been oi bands in 69, we'd have all been into stuff like that, you know what I mean? Oi is about having a laugh, having a sigh. Oi is a cockney expression. Oi! You know, we were angry and we wanted to, you know, we, we got together and we thought, fuck the world. Do you know what I mean? And that's really what it was all about. And the sort of, the skinhead thing, above anything, is the only cult ever that's been true. Well, my music's just got a point, like a strong point about life for kids and all that. It's about kids on the street, so why shouldn't they listen to it? You know, all, all the gangs about and all that, they were just raving. Rappers, it's just a load of crap. So the only thing with more of an attitude is, is that sort of believe in yourself, stand up for yourself, fight for yourself attitude. And as long as people have got the ump with, this, with not necessarily with society, but with the way they're told to do things, you're always going to have some form of oi music. The only bad reputation oi music has got, really, is because of the white noise bands, you know, the fascist punk bands. And, um, they themselves don't call themselves oi, they call themselves like nationalist rock or some sort of crap like that. But um, real oi music, it's, it's, um, it's never have been, had anything to do with, you know, um, fascist politics or anything like that. We never really associate ourselves with the oi thing, although our music was very similar at the beginning to, to oi and sort of skinny kind of punk music, whatever. Everything other than white pride is allowed to be pushed through and, and even if you got you know, you're allowed to have a cop killer on your television program saying, Yeah, buy my records, I'm a big black murderer but you can't have somebody sitting on the television saying, um, these are my records. I sing about white pride. It's about pride in my race. I don't hate anybody because of their colour of skin. I'm just very proud of the, the colour of the skin that I've got. Under the guards, under the guards, one step over the red line. The Blood and Honor basically was uh, an organisation started because uh, they wanted to break away from, from the White Noise Club, which was controlled by the National Front. Um, although the bands involved, would, I would say, were definitely right-wing and along those lines. They, they were seeing that the National Front were taking advantage of the bands and not paying anybody and, and basically ripping everybody off. Uh, and although we wanted to keep the politics the same, uh, most people in the bands and, and uh, you know, organisers in that kind of field uh, felt it important to, to run an independent thing, totally independent of any political group, so we could bring in um, anybody, basically, who believed in the survival of the white race.
when skinheads developed second time round, you know, the National Front started infiltrating because basically they just wanted stormtroopers. Do you know what I mean? So they thought, who's the best people to fight our fight for us? So they thought, we you know, working class youth who we can mould and what have you. The Skinhead way of life came to Germany as an already distorted kind of movement because at the time when it came to Germany, the National Front already had some sort of impact on the whole movement in England. So when it came to Germany, it was, as I said, distorted in some kind of way. And there were lots of people thinking that um, I'm right wing, so I have to dress up like a skinhead. Skinheads in, in East Germany exist since about 86, something like that. But because um, there were no real connections to, to England, so we didn't have the background here. So most of them were, were of course, right wing and just cut their hair and wore, well, we didn't have bomber jackets in East Germany, but you know, kind of, some kind of boots and, no, oh, that's not <laughs> People who wore skinhead clothes, who were skinheads, were very angry. And so the extremes, it was, it, they were easy targets. They're easy to pick up and say, you know, believe what we say and you'll be with us and you'll fight for us. And you would have done. And I walked down the street and I know everybody looking at me thinks, Nazi scum. I mean, I know I'm not. My mates know I'm not. But to the normal Joe in the street, that's what I'm at. The minute they see skinheads, they go, oh, bloody Nazis. And that is wrong. And they, yeah, oh, that is wrong. wrong. What, to me, you should say, oh, he's, he's patriotic, he loves his country and that, and he's... Just a culture. It's, so you know, it's a culture, it's a yeah. way of life. When you think of where you came from, it must fill your heart with pride. Skinhead comes from England, and these are the roots, and I believe in them. So I wear a Juni Jack and I believe in, in England and the skinhead roots and so I wear the Spartan. People harp on about, you know, um, the, the, the old days in, in the 60s and stuff like that with the, with the reggae music and stuff. Uh, even back then there were, there were racist skinheads and, and uh, all that sort of thing, but not so, so much maybe affiliated to political parties. But uh, in the in the um, late 70s and 80s and, and as of now, I think that the uh, the connection is, is definitely there. If you know where your history comes from, which is a mixture of British and Jamaican working class cultures, how can you be a racist? By being racist, you're denying your heritage. When we used to go and see bad manners and, and uh, madness and stuff like that, and uh, although even some of the bands that would have like, like black musicians and that sort of thing, there was never that two-tone thing being pushed down your throat and the whole place was, was full of skinheads and most of them were right wing. I think a lot of people there just go along like you do uh, to a football match and, and get tag, tagged, you know, you see people go, hey, and you think, oh yeah, that looks good, <laughs> without really knowing what you're doing. Politicians will will go for the Skinner cult because of the passion involved in Skinner, so it's easy for an extreme party to grab hold of passionate kids and say, believe in us and have passion, whether it be the Nazis, the lefties, the I mean, band the bombs, whoever it may be. I mean, I remember coming out of a uh, Bad Manners gig in, uh, in the Rainbow in North London, and uh, there must be about 500 Skinheads came out, and they all walked underneath this arch with Zeke Highland and stuff, and a couple of blacks got beaten up and stuff, but there, were, there was a very high presence of right wing, there was never any, any, any suggestion of any left wing thing, even though the two-tone thing probably could be, you know, sort of traced back to, to the, uh, the black and white business. But it's very difficult, you know, to do anything to promote racial harmony. I mean, we, we used to get a lot of stick for not really coming out with some sort of political uh, agenda. You know, we used to just sort of talk to some of these people and try and uh, turn them around or whatever, you know, or find out why they thought like that. Politics is, is what's done most of the damage to the skinhead cult over the years. It's torn it completely in half. Um, I mean, it's a personal thing. I mean, I've got my own politics, but they're not to do with me being a skinhead, they're to do with me being a person. To me, it's obvious. It's not politics 
that have ruined the scene, it's the fascists have ruined the scene with their politics. There's no real contradiction, I don't think, in the fact that a skinner can be white power. I think that the contradiction would be uh, left-wing skinheads or or, um, or black skinheads, because I don't see that they can be, really, because it's a white working-class uh, cult. What you get from black people is, like, an unnecessary grief, because you don't expect it, you don't, you don't need it, do you know what I mean? Because it's like, I am a black person, so just let me do what I've got to do, do you know what I mean? And let me get on with it, do you know what I mean? But they don't, they don't look at it like that, they look at it as, like, you're a traitor. A lot of Nazis put you down because you're not white or whatever, and the skinheads came out from being, oh, it was a white, you know, gang or whatever. It wasn't about that, though. Everyone said that, you know, all the skinheads are Nazis and that. There's no way we're Nazis. I mean, my father fought Nazis in the war. All our dads did. There's no way we're Nazis, but the anti-packy league was different. That doesn't make us Nazis. I'm English. Exactly. I'm British, and I'm proud to be English and British. But, but we've done it so we're Nazis like because Nazis. we like our country, isn't it? We're the best at Nazis, British movement. sides just want to like use you you know like either like the far left or the far right just want to like use skinheads like as scapegoats for whatever you know what I mean just like there's like uh, just like the clan want to use skinheads to do their dirty work or whatever then there's like whatever else groups like the anti-nazi league want to use skinheads and everything most skinheads are right-wing and possibly they don't choose to be right-wing but they become skinheads but they become uh, right wing because they're in a position to see things that, as other people don't. Rufus stand and fight for the right to live in Shanty Town. Rufus stand and fight for the right to live in Shanty Town. Jack Lex Diamond. against racial prejudice. It started in 88 in New York. People like didn't understand it, you know, because in New York was weird times back then. It was really rough, you know, like even there were black Nazi skinheads, you know. CHAP is not an organization. CHAP is just a statement for expressing the way you feel. If you're a true skinhead who acknowledges your history, hates racism, is into your reggae music and stuff like that, wear a CHAP badge with pride. So. Joe Public will see you with your badge on and think, oh, I, I got it wrong. Not all skinheads are racist. I think that the idea of Sharp was very important for the whole of Germany because it brought the idea, uh, to, it published the idea that uh, not every skinhead has necessarily to be a racist. But the problem was that people believed that by putting a Sharp badge on their jacket, there was, it was some sort of movement. He says that, that the Sharp um, often use their badge as kind of excuse. If, if they meet a Turkish gang on the street, they point on their badge and say, look, I'm not Nazi, I'm not fascist, I'm with you. And if they come, if boneheads come along, they like, see <laughs> Kyle, go along like that, you know? That's what he said. We well, get attacked from both sides, from the Sharps and even from the right wings too. So we've, we've, we, we actually really stand on our own. Norwegians, they don't like Nazis, like Norway was occupied by the Nazis and we feel that the Nazis should be kept away. So we made this sharp patch and we told our friends that you put this on or you fuck off. But after a while, I mean, uh, it started getting rid of shit because a lot of people thought it was a sort of a group fighting against fascism. At this point in the, in the skinhead movement's history, I don't really see where it's needed. And I don't see why you should have to wear a sharp patch or anything like that to prove that you're not into it. I mean, the general public doesn't like us anyway, so, you know, why bother to impress them with stuff like that? I think it's a great shame that some skinheads seem to get into their their heads that they have to always go around apologising, almost falling over themselves to say, look, we're not racist, we're not racist, without even considering what racism is and what being racist is about.
The best development that I've seen in the cult today is the whole non-political movement. The fact that skinheads are like dropping politics generally, you know, like no racist element, no sharp. That skinheads are just interested in being skinheads, and I see that that aspect really growing. And I think that's one of the best things about it. And if that'll continue to grow, maybe we can get things back to the way they were in 1969. in the world, you know, and I think we should just fucking get together, hang out, get rid of the politics, I would say to the Nazis to like just tell the fucking Ku Klux Klan or whoever hires them to be grunts, to just drop them, you know, they could think for themselves, I'll welcome you as a brother, as long as you don't put your politics on to me. I suppose the best thing you could say is... If you ain't got the nerve to stand by your roots, maybe it's time you hung up your boots. Because you're young, sharp as a knife, you need that bus to come alive. Out on the edge, out on the town, you ain't got time to settle down. You're always sure. make something better out of their environment and out of themselves. Even if it's for a couple of years and they go off to drink beer and just become a fat slob, it doesn't matter. Then two years they bleed to themselves. I gotta have money to raise a family and support some kids and to have a wife and to have a life. Other than that, I'm gonna end up in jail, I'm gonna end up dead. And within Portland, it'll be too easy to end up dead. I suppose the best memories are when I was a kid, when I was like 12, 13, 14 going up the youth clubs, you know what I mean? Dancing to reggae music. During the summer, going down the beach on a bank holiday with all the boys, like, it was just the fun of being a youth. That's really what being a skinhead was all about. I don't think skinheads will ever have to be remembered. They'll always be here, you know? Sort of part of the mainstream of society now. You know you're gonna find a smiling face somewhere, almost anywhere in the world, when you're a skinhead, that's for sure. As long as you can find a real one out there. It'll give you a handshake and buy your pint, and you'll do the same if you come to your town, you know? To remember it is basically a group of people that were interested in a way, a way of dress, a way of music, a way of life, and enjoyed themselves. I'd like to think that the cult would be remembered as a group of young people that took pride in themselves, took pride in the way they looked, and not the way it's obviously going to be remembered if it carries on the way it's going. It'd be nice for it to come back for the music and the clothes, leaving the politics well out. I think that Skins should be remembered as the ultimate cult, the ultimate youth cult. And, um, you know, I think that, that Skinheads have far outlived their uh, sell by date as, as of, you know, printed by the authorities. You know, the crop stays with you. 24 hours a day, the tattoos aren't going anywhere for the rest of my life, you know. I mean, it's something that, you know, it's not a uniform I put on, you know, just to hang out on the weekends with my friends at the mall or whatever, it's something I live. I think Skinners will be remembered by, by passion. It's about passion, and it's not about fashion. 
It's about a way of life, and, and a, it's about it's about your armour. It's about your manhood. It's about your, your friends. You you know your whole environment. We're horrible kids, really. Do you know what I mean? We're horrible. I mean, we all said our oh, people were picking us, but we were <laughs> 20 of us walking into a pub and we were big blokes, you know, being loud and out of order. We weren't angels at all. I don't think any other cult captures that, that feeling of rebellion and that, that feeling of strength of comradeship as, as, as being a skinhead. The reason why it was so feared is because it was just so true. Because people couldn't accept that it. it was just such a staunch way of life for people. And it wasn't a fashion as everyone hoped and thought it would be. It was a way of life. Reggae! We'd live and die for Friday night Off to the alley and have a fight Dance to reggae most of the night When we were skins Above all this, our one big hope Was pull a bird and ever grow and if you were lucky, she'd take your own when we were skins. Hook it, 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 hook it